If you are attending SQL interview for a FANG company or some big tech companies, then the SQL interview problem that I am going to be solving in this video is going to be very essential. It's a problem where you will get to know how to work with timestamp data, how to perform some time manipulation, how to segregate uh, time into different buckets and perform some operations on that. These are the kind of problems that are very commonly asked in these big tech companies. I'll be solving this problem on SQL Nest. So straight away, let's get into SQL Nest. As you can see, I am on SQL Nest and let's go into Query Hub. And here, let's look at this very first problem. It's a medium level problem. I think some of you would probably argue that it's going to be a hard problem, but the problem ID is 1075. So let's click on that. And here we need to solve the problem. But first of all, let us understand the problem statement. So let me just maximize this problem statement. Let me just zoom in a little. The title of this problem is round events to the nearest 15 minute window and count per user. You work on an analytics team for a video streaming platform. Each time a user performs a key action, play, pause, seek, etc., the system logs a timestamp in UTC. Analysts want aggregated activity into 15 minute windows, but they want to round each event timestamp to the nearest 15 minute mark rather than simply flooring to the previous quarter hour. We have been given this one table user events. It has two fields, user ID and event time. The user ID is int and event time is a timestamp. They have given some additional information here. For example, an event, if an event happened, let's say at 10 o'clock, 7 minutes, 10 seconds, then it should be grouped to the bucket that is at 10 o'clock. But let's say if an event happened at 10 o'clock, 8 minutes and 10 seconds, then it should be basically tagged to the bucket that is 10, 15. Okay. So you need to, based on if an event happened at a particular time, you need to tag it to the nearest bucket. Your task for each user and each 15 minute window. So for each user and for each 15 minute window, compute how many events fall into that window. Where the window start is the event time rounded to the nearest 15 minute boundary. Your query should output the user ID and the following two columns, window start UTC and event count. And we have the expected output and the reasons for that is mentioned here. Now, in order to better understand this, let's look at the input data. So let me just <coughs> zoom out a bit. And if I just execute this query, I have this input data. And let's do one thing. Let me just make this a little big here. And okay, let me just zoom in a bit. As you can see here, we have five records. So there is information about two different users. So there is user ID one and user ID two and some time. This is the time where they performed some action, okay, some event. If you look at the time, it's at 1st Jan 2025. And the important thing here is the time. It ha The event happened at 10, 10 o'clock, 7 minutes, 10 seconds. The second event is at 10 o'clock, 8 minutes, 10 seconds. The third event is at 10 o'clock, 22 minutes. The fourth one at 10 o'clock, 37 minutes, 30 seconds. And the last one at 10 o'clock, 44 minutes, 40 seconds. What we need to do is we need to segregate each of this event to the nearest 15 minute window. Now, what do you mean by this 15 minute window? In order to understand that, let's take some example. Let's say I'll create some window. Okay. Just randomly creating a window here. Let's say I'll call window one, which will be from zero minute to 15 minutes. And let's call this window in other words, like a 15 minutes window, which is between 0 to 15. Okay, so I'll, I'll have it like this. Okay. And in terms of seconds, it is like every 15 minute window is going to have 900 seconds, right? Now, similarly, if I create few more windows, so let's say a window two would be for 30 minutes, and it would be between the 15 minute mark and the 30 minute mark, right? And here, the number of seconds for 30 minutes would be I think 1800 seconds, right? So Similarly, let's create few more windows quickly. So I've quickly <clears throat> created these windows. Let me explain what I'm trying to do here. The first window is basically the first 15 minutes, right? Let's say if some event happened in the early morning at let's say 12, 15, right? That would be the first 15 minutes of the day, right? The second window is the next 15 minutes that happens between the 15 and 30 minutes. The third window that happens between 30 minutes and 45 minutes. That is this one. The fourth window is the window that happens any event that happens between 45 minutes and 60 minutes. 
and then so on and so forth. So I have taken two more example sample windows here. So 75, uh, the window five, that is 75 minutes. That is the time between 60 and 75 minutes. That is one hour and one hour 15 minutes in other words. And then the event that happens between one hour 15 minutes and one hour 30 minutes, that is this 90 minute window or the window six, okay? Now under each of this window, <clears throat> because we are dealing with 15 minute window, 15 minutes will have 900 seconds, right? We know that you can calculate. So this first window is at 900 seconds, second window is at 1800 seconds, third is at 2700 seconds and so on and so forth, okay? Now <clears throat> this is crucial for you to kind of figure out or imagine in your mind, okay? Now why it is important, you will come to know next. Let's now take some sample time, okay? Uh, let's say there was some event that happened at 44th minute, okay? So on like, let's say <clears throat> at 12.44, okay, in, in the midnight, early morning, some event happened, okay? And there is also some event happened, let's say I'll take some four events, okay? Uh, so at 44, then let's say at one o'clock, uh, five minutes and one o'clock, eight minutes, and let's say one o'clock, 20 minutes, okay? Some event happened, okay? So I'll put it here. Now, why I have taken this is, let's say if I bring this little down, I want to kind of analyze manually, this event will fall into which window, right? So each of these four events will fall into which window. Once we understand that, then we can build our SQL logic for this events table. Now, if you imagine, what do you think? This event will fall into which window? It's at 44 minutes, 30 seconds. So first of all, it is difficult to kind of segregate this time into a particular window. It would be much easier if I could convert this into seconds and then based on the seconds that I have mentioned here, I can do basically I can group it or tag it to a particular bucket. So if I have to convert this into seconds, how would I convert it? So zero, zero hour means zero seconds plus 44 minutes is, okay, how much is 44 minutes in seconds? So it's 44 into 60. So if I run this and I have the shortcut key to run it, so it's 2640, so 2640 plus the 30 seconds. So this would be equal to 2670 seconds, right? Similarly, <clears throat> let's calculate for this. So this is one hour. One hour is like 3600 seconds, right? And then five minutes, five minutes is 300 seconds and then 30 seconds. And again, let me copy this, okay, but 3600 plus 300 is 3930 seconds, right? So let me copy this whole thing here and try to find the number of seconds for each of these events. So this is one hour, eight minutes is I think 480 seconds plus this, it will become uh, 4110, right? And then this is 3,600 uh, plus 20 minutes is 1,200 seconds. So this would become 4,830 seconds, okay? Now, why am I doing this is, I initially came up with some windows, okay? These are the 15 minute slots that I am analyzing. Then I have some events that happened this time. I converted this time into seconds. Now I want to know these seconds will belong to which particular window. <clears throat> they have also told us in the problem statement that we need to round it off to the nearest window. 2670 is close to 2700, right? 2930 is close to, I think, again, 2700. But first, let us try to find out how many 15 minute window each of this time basically has, right? Now, in order to do that, let's try to calculate it. So I'll just take the first example here, 2670. I'll divide it by the 15 minute window. 15 minute window is having 900 seconds, right? So I can either put 900 or I'll say 15 into 60. Reason is tomorrow if you have a problem where you have, let's say 20 minute window or five minute window, you can just do five into 60 or 20 into 60, etc. right? So it will be easier for you to understand. So I'll do this and if I run this, let's see how much am I getting? I'm getting two. I think it's missing the decimal point here. Uh, so let's convert this into decimal. And if I run it, it's saying 2.9. Right now, 2.9 is fine, but I want to round it off. I want to round it off to the closest window. So, if I do a round here, okay, so if I do a round of this whole thing, if I run it, now it's telling me three. 
<coughs> okay so this means this 2670 falls into the window 3 that is this 45 minute window okay because 45 minutes is 2700 so now if i let's say if i multiply this back with the number of seconds that i initially divided if i multiply with this it will give me 2700 what am i doing here i initially defined some windows based on 15 minute time and then i have some random event time and i want to figure out where each of this time falls into which particular window right so what do i do i kind of first divide this window which i have already converted into seconds divided it by the number of seconds in each window this will kind of give me some decimal value i round round it off because i want to get it closer to a particular slot or a window and then i am multiplying it again by number of seconds to basically get the actual value right now i have this 2700 now from here i can easily tell this 2700 falls into this window 3 right same way let's say if i have another example so i'll take all the four examples here so the second example was for 2930 the third one was for 4110 and the last one was 4830 if i run the second query here I miscalculated something here it is 3600 plus this one so it should be 3930 so this value here should be 3930 if I run this now you can see that it's basically falling coming to 3600 3600 is this one so it falls into window 4 okay so you could say that this falls into window 3 whereas this falls into window four and let's see what about the third one so the third one is four one one zero and if i just run this it's four thousand five hundred four thousand five hundred is this one that is window five right so this falls into window five and let's see the last one the last one is four eight three eight which is this one if i run this it is again four thousand five hundred so this will again go into this window five so the same window five right so with this calculation, I am able to figure out each time, basically each of this event will fall into which window, right? Now, once I know this, I can easily group the data and then basically count how many events happened in each window for each user, right? But first of all, this time is in seconds. I want to convert this into back into timestamp. So if I want to convert back into timestamp, I can just use the function to timestamp, right? I'll just copy it here I'll put it here um, here and let's say here and <coughs> just close the parenthesis here for all the four and if I run it you can see that I'm getting the proper timestamp right but ignore this 1970 -0101 because this is the epoch time by default you'll get this time but if you look at the timestamp it is 004500 right so that means it falls into this 45 minute window that is window 3 whereas the next one is at 1 hour 0 minutes so this falls into this fourth window that we saw here right this one right so this is how we can convert our seconds into timestamp now what basically i have got is for a particular randomly selected time i can figure i can convert it into seconds and then using this logic i am able to figure out which 15 minute window it can it falls into right now if i just replace this with the actual value that i am getting from the user events table i will be able to segregate each of this events time into the proper window right so now let me try to do that so i will copy this table i'll take this table i'll put it here right and here i will just tell i want the <coughs> user id and i want the event time right and okay i have this but i want to convert this event time into seconds if i want to convert a time into seconds i can just use the epoch um, keyword i can say extract I'll say epoch from this time epoch is basically kind of like a historical time that is starting at 1970 1st Jan uh, so from that moment it will calculate how many seconds have happened for this particular time so if I run it you can see that it's basically telling from 1970 1st Jan 
this is the number of seconds that have happened until this event time. So if you want to see the event time as well, this is the event time. If I run it, see. So from 1970 1st Jan until 2025 1st Jan, this much seconds have basically lapsed. Okay. Now I want this in seconds so that I can do all of the calculations, right? Now what I'll do is I'll move this into a CT. So I'll say with CT as and let's say if I just have this and here I'll say my main query from CT and here I'll say <clears throat> I'll copy this and I'll put this here and <clears throat> what I want to do is I've got this field I'm just going to name it like let's say event seconds okay and I'll use this event seconds here but I want to use this whole logic so I will copy this whole logic and I will put it here and I'll replace this hard-coded time with this event seconds and now if I run this and I'm getting an error because because I have to put this not here but I have to put it here and now let me run this now you can see that I'm getting the data so if I just maybe show you the whole data that is this one <coughs> okay uh, so I think each of this event time so 10 7 belongs is basically categorized into 10 o'clock 10 8 is categorized to 10 15 10 22 is categorized to 10 15 again because it's closer to 10 15 window 10 37 categorized to 10 45 because 10 37 30 is closer to the next window that is 10 45 and the 10 44 40 is categorized to uh, basically segregated to the 10 45 window right as you can see here now <clears throat> once I have done this but you see here in my expected output I do not have the time zone whereas in my output I have the time zone so if I have to remove the time zone and only maintain the date and the timestamp I can use the to care function so I'll say to care and here I will provide the format that is yyyy mm dd hour 24 minute and seconds okay and if I run this now I have the proper time how I want it in my expected output right and I don't need the event time so I will just uh, remove this and I'm going to give a name for this column and the name I'll just use what is given in the expected output that is this column name right if I run this now and if okay if I look at the output you can see that I'm having this data right now what I want in my expected output if you remember what we wanted we want for each user each event in each time window how many events they have done right so I want to group the data based on each user each event window and then count the number of events right so in order to do that what I can do is I can first of all I can group the data so I will say group by uh, user ID and this particular field and I'll also sort the data based on the same field so order by and then here I'll just tell count of one as I think the last column is this event count so I'll just put that here and now if I run this whole query you can see that I'm getting user ID one he has done one event at 10 o'clock uh, window and two events at 10 15 window whereas user two has done two events at 10 45 window okay and this is basically I think similar to my expected output now in order to verify if this output is correct I can just do a submit so let's do a submit and you can see here the solution has been accepted. So this is how I have solved this problem on SQL nest using the PostgreSQL database. Of course, you can choose any other database of your choice. In fact, you also have the option if you go to my profile, edit profile, you can choose what is your preferred database. If I choose Oracle, then always when I go to any problem, it will set to Oracle. I hope you like the problem. I hope you saw how easy it was to solve the problem on SQL nest. I hope you saw uh, this whole thing that we have implemented this result set where you can easily navigate to different data and analyze the data. So I was not just solving the problem. I came up with my logic. I analyzed it and I was trying to build different steps, multiple steps and then finally solve the problem. Right. So this is how you can solve problems on SQL Nest. I hope you get an idea. And similar to this, there are a lot more interesting problems on SQL Nest. So definitely check out SQL Nest, check out all the other problems and let me know in the comments below. Uh, what you think about this problem. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.